Hello. Hi. I hope you're well. My name's Severine. I'm an actor, I'm a writer, I'm a director. A lot of people have asked me for my curly hair routine, so here it is. The first thing that I do is I wash my hair. No, because I actually detangle my hair the night before, or in this case, a couple days before, because I knew I was gonna be traveling. And to do that, I used water in a spray bottle with coconut oil, and I also used this hairbrush. I will put the name of it around my head now. It is my favorite hairbrush, and I love it so, so much for curly hair, because the little prongs inside of it, it's actually quite flexible. Um, it's not like a solid unit or a block of wood or plastic or whatever, so it moves with my hair. Here you can see in this clip, I am beautifully detangling it, um, you know, very real as I did in person. <laughs> Not only does that really, really help to hydrate my hair and treat it so that it gets a little bit of extra love in, especially in winter time when it's dry, but it also means that I save a lot of water in the shower because I am detangling it myself rather than standing underneath the shower. I will separate it into six braids. I do two on the bottom, two in the middle, two on the top, and I put it all up and leave it like that. I sleep with it damp, it doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, feel free to like sleep on a towel, but something that's really gentle. Um, I sleep on a satin pillowcase because because that's really, really good for my hair and for my curls. I'm sure that all my curly girls already know about that. <laughs> so that's what I like to do, um, but you can do whatever you like. And then the next day I will rinse it. So the first thing that I do to cleanse my hair is I use the Cantu Tea Tree Peppermint Oil Apple Cider Vinegar Root Rinse. My scalp tends to get very, very dry. To help with that, I use products which help to balance it out. This has got apple cider vinegar in it, which is amazing. And although I don't love Cantu as a brand, they've got some ingredients which are questionable for curly hair. This particular product from the line I love. And what I also love about it is it's got a really nice pointy tip, which means I can properly get close to my scalp and get to all of the areas which are troublesome for me and proper massage it in. It tingles a little bit, but it feels so good. I remember when I big chopped my hair a couple years ago, obviously my hair being really short meant that the cold wind <laughs> and the breeze was getting to my scalp. My scalp took a hit when I first cut my hair and this was the product which really helped to balance everything for me. Some people use straight apple cider vinegar and I've done that before, but I just love that this is convenient to go get at the shops and it's it's affordable as well which I love my hair type I have got low porosity curls and I also consider my hair curl pattern to be like 3c 3b I'm mixed I've got like six different textures on my head I don't know like it changes what it wants to <laughs> but if I had to put a number on it that is what I would say around 3b 3c but it changes that's why I usually don't like saying what the texture is of my hair but my hair is very dense which means I've got quite a lot of hair in a small area my hair is on the thicker side than the thinner side and I do have a lot of it because of my low porosity hair I love looking for products which are water-based very light and that don't inhibit the volume of my hair because I like my hair big you know we like it big up in this house if if you want more information about hair porosity and how to figure that out, my girl at Yes Yes Charity here on YouTube has made a video all about that and it's really amazing. I highly suggest you have a look at it after you finish watching this. But if you want a quick rundown, hair porosity is the cuticles of the hair, whatever they're called, the little layers of the hair that form your hair structure. It's how stubborn or how resistant they are to opening and closing. So for me with low porosity hair, that means that my hair is quite stubborn. I use different temperatures in the water to help control it. So I use warmer temperatures to open it up for when I'm applying product in my hair, and then I will seal it with colder temperatures because that helps everything to stay in place. Um, but I don't use direct heat on my hair. Like I don't, I don't use a diffuser, none of that, but I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so once I have cleansed with the Cantu product, I will then cleanse again using a hydrating shampoo. Now the one which I love to use is this hydrating coconut one by Shea Moisture. It is slightly more cleansing than a co-wash, but not as stripping as a regular shampoo, which is why I love it. The coconut in it is super hydrating. And like I said, my scalp tends to be quite dry. So I drink a lot of water and do things like that. And London water, I can thank you for drying out my scalp. So I will again apply a generous amount of that and massage it into my scalp. And once I've done that, I will rinse it out and my hair never feels overly stripped from this shampoo. I don't don't use any sulfates, parabens, sulfites, none of that nasty stuff for curls. Stay away from them if you've got curly hair, they just damage our hair over time. Once I have rinsed out my shampoo, it is time to condition or deep condition, which I do every single time that I wash my hair. And for the record, I wash my hair maybe once a week, once every other week, depending on how 
bothered I am because it takes a long time. The mask which I brought with me here on this trip is this one by Shea Moisture. It is the Jamaican black castor oil and apple cider vinegar and peppermint and all of that good stuff mask. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It smells really, really good. I think it smells a little bit like Play-Doh, but that smell doesn't bother me. So I quite like it. It's very, very thick, hydrating. I will rake that through my hair and do it in sections. But if I'm not using that mask, the other conditioner, which I love is the hydrating coconut one from Shea Moisture as well. I will use that the same way as I use a deep conditioning hair mask. In my opinion, there isn't much difference between a rinse out conditioner and the hair mask other than the consistency. I tend to find the hair masks are a bit thicker, but I do use the regular rinse out conditioner as a deep conditioner too. It just depends on what I have on me. I part it in three sections. I part the bottom third down there, the bottom half of my hair, bottom third, and then I do two sections at the top. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do less, but this is why I detangled my hair in advance with the coconut oil the night before because it saves me a lot of time and I can use God's comb, which is my lovely fingers. I will rake it through my hair in sections and braid each section away, very similar to the style which I did when I was detangling. I will put it up and I will grab my lovely shower cap, pop it on my head and this is where I will wrap my hair in a towel. My towel is not actually touching my hair because I don't use towels on my hair. Again, I'll get to that in a second. I will leave it on my head for an hour, two hours sometimes three, depending on when I can be bothered to rinse it out, to be honest. Once I am ready to rinse out the deep conditioner, I will flip my head upside down and rinse it over the shower, usually with lukewarm water. I used to use cold, but girl, it is winter time. It's cold in these streets. I am not trying to put icy cold water all over my head. Mm -mm, that's not what I'm trying to do. So I use lukewarm because that helps to seal in the moisture in my hair. Now, in this particular instance, I'm only rinsing out about 80% of the conditioner because I forgot my leave-in conditioner at home. So I'm trying to preserve some of that extra moisture. But if I do have my leave-in conditioner, I will rinse it all out. But once I've rinsed it out, I keep my hair wet. Now, at this point, this is where some people might grab a towel and wrap their head around it before they apply their styling product. I don't do that, okay? I'm gonna use an old T-shirt which I don't mind getting dirty, a cotton t-shirt. I've had this t-shirt for years, I love it, and it works really well to dry my hair. The reason I do that is because towels, the fibers in the towels are actually quite harsh and the rubbing together can cause a lot of frizz and breakage on curly hair, which is very, very sensitive and needs a lot of love. Now we're gonna talk about styling. So usually I would apply my leave-in conditioner spray from Shea Moisture, the hydrating coconut one. Again, love this, it is water-based, so my low porosity hair loves it because it's really, really lightweight, but super hydrating. And I spray that on and rake it through and that will be my leave-in base. Once I have applied my leave-in conditioner spray, or in this case, I'm leaving in the hair mask, I will go in with my styling cream. Y'all, let me tell you about the styling cream. Jane Carter Solutions Incredible Curls. <sighs> if you are not on, <clears throat> if you don't know about this cream, let me tell you about this cream. This cream changed my mother life, okay? It is so hydrating and so defining. It has been sent to me by God. I believe that. I will say that with my chest. God brought this cream into my life. It is, it is so good. I prefer it over a gel because it is actually nourishing my hair. It's 97% vegan, incredible ingredients. I just, I love this cream. I think I discovered it like five, four or five years ago. And I've tried other styling creams in between. I always go back to that one. It's my favorite, I, I love it. Jane Carter, you, girl, you did something. You, you did something there. I will style my hair in the same sections that I had my deep conditioning hair mask in. So I start with the bottom. I grab quite a generous amount, like they say dime size, we'd be like taking the whole bottle, you know, one styling, but this cream, because it's so thick, it lasts for quite a long time. What I do, I smooth and rake, and then I take each section of my hair and I coil each curl around my finger. And this helps to really define the curls. I'm somebody who likes a combination of definition and volume. Rake and smooth, then define each curl. Rake and smooth, find each curl and I do this throughout my whole head. I don't know what method this is called. I think it's a bit of the shingling method and the curly girl method and the finger coiling method and loads of methods combined in one method. This is just what I do, okay? This is a combination of 
trial and error, figuring out what my hair likes, and this is where it's got me. Bear in mind, the smaller that the coils are that I do, the more defined my curls are gonna be. But I still take relatively decent sections, I just pay attention to where it naturally wants to part, and I coil it that way. I don't force a part in my hair, I figure out where it wants to go. Just over the years, the way my hair has grown out since I big chopped it, it has grown with a middle part and these improvised bangs, which kind of look like they have a square in the middle. Part the top section in two, and I then take smaller sections of each one to make sure that I'm thoroughly distributing the curling cream all throughout my hair. I go in smaller sections, parting it diagonally, and going that way, and then that way, and then that way. You get the idea, you can see the clip. Then, once I've done my whole head, I will grab my cotton t-shirt again and gently squeeze out the excess moisture. You know you've done it correctly when you hear that lovely squelch sound. If you have curly hair, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm just gently squeezing out the excess product with my cotton t-shirt to speed up the drying process. If my cotton t-shirt is really damp, like it was at this point, I might gently do the same with my towel. But like I said, I'm not wrapping the towel around my head, so don't come for me. Gently squeezing it with the towel is fine. And also, scrunching up helps to define the curls a little bit more. I don't mind if I have a little bit of frizz after I've done this because my hair gets frizzy anyway with volume. It's kind of hard to get volume without frizz. My curls are gonna look popping, just you wait. Yeah, like my best friend Selena says, snap, crackle and pop and beat. I will grab this little crocodile clip and I will gently simmer up, just, just shimmy up my, my little improvised fringe, my little improvised bangs, just so that I can see as I'm minding my business. I don't diffuse, I don't diffuse, I don't use heat, I don't like it and my hair is way healthier when I don't do it, so I air dry. What I will do is I will sit near the radiator sometimes. Now listen, okay, don't be sitting near the radiator and do not let your hair touch the radiator, all right? I don't want any DMs from people being like, I followed your hair routine and you frazzled my hair. No, that's not, no, no. Do not put your hair on the radiator. Don't be stupid, all right? I just sit near it to help the heat gently, gently dry my hair. So I'm not using direct heat on my hair. I'm just using mild heat to help speed it up a little bit. And do not think that I am done here, my friends. Once it is fully dried, this is what I do. <laughs> the reason why I coiled it round and round and round around my finger all over my head is because now the definition, ooh, you know, it's nice, it's very defined, it's very cute, whatever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate them. So you can see here, I'll show you one like this one. This is a big clump. What I do, I go through my head and I gently separate again and again. And as you can see, that one curl has now become like five or six smaller ones, which are more defined. And because there's more, you can already see, it's gonna, it's gonna blow up and go big. So I'm gonna do my whole head and We'll see what it looks like at the end. You could put oil on your hands for this if you find that your hair is particularly dry, but my, my hair feels very, very soft right now. I'm not raking my hands through anymore because that will cause frizz and mess up the beautiful curls, which we worked so hard on. I'm just being really, really gentle. I'm gonna start at the bottom. The way that my hair is now, before I've separated the curls, is how I will arrive to set as well. And then when I'm in the hair and makeup chair with my beautiful makeup artist and wonderful friend, Edith, if you're watching this, love you. The way that we will style it is we will separate the curls and that will be part of styling my hair. Because especially for certain characters when I want the hair definition to be really, really popping and defined and close to how I style it, then it just means that the definition is gonna be looking as fresh and crisp as possible. I will wash my hair the night before I go on set. Then when we do style it the next day, it's looking really, really fresh. You can see here already, the curls are starting to pop and you know come out. It's looking cute, looking much better. Sometimes when I take it apart like so, I might then smooth it over with my finger. Not always, this is just sometimes. You just gotta feel it. It was through watching videos like this that I learned how to style my hair. My mom is a black woman and knew what to do with my hair, of course, but my mom and I have got very different curl textures. So what she would use on her hair, she would also use on mine and it would work. But then when I got to a certain age and my texture started to change, those kind of products wouldn't work for me anymore just because we've got very different hair textures. So it became a case of me independently learning how to look after my hair. And there were some things that I do to my hair which my mom doesn't do or she didn't know how to do. And there are some things that she does, which I don't know how to do because our hair is different. Black hair is not the same across the board. And that is what I love. It's one of the things I love about being black, about being a black mixed race woman. I just love the versatility of my hair, of our hair. Our hair can do so much, you know? Black people are magic, y'all. 
black hair does so much. We shape shift. <laughs> I love it. When I big chopped my hair, I cut it off because I got very, very tired of it being the first thing that people would notice about me. It became frustrating for me when people would always notice my hair before they would see me. But more so, I cut it off because I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to challenge myself that I am beautiful without my hair because it's really weird. Society hates our curls, but also loves our curls and wants our curls. And when we have curls, that's the first thing that people love when they see us, you know? Our hair is so beautiful. I just, I can't get over how magical it is. You know, I just, I love the different textures of black hair and how wonderful it is. And we, when we nourish it, it nourishes us, you know? So that's why I'm very particular about what I put on my hair. And on set, that is a conversation. Oh my goodness. I remember the first two jobs that I ever booked on TV the first two, so bear in mind I had no experience, I brought my own hair products to set because I just had a feeling that they wouldn't have what they needed to look after my hair for a job which was so short. And they didn't, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have what I needed. They had products like hairspray and things to tighten it back and tame it as it were, um, but they didn't have the products to properly style it. So I did my own hair for my first two jobs or I, I didn't completely do my own hair for my first job, but I had heavy input. And it's, it, don't get me wrong, that it's a conversation whenever you are in a makeup artist chair. It's always a conversation, but the kind of conversation that I was having with the makeup artist was not the one which my white colleagues were having with theirs. Little messages like that make it very, very clear that black and brown artists are not as welcome. I've heard that the same kind of thing happens in the modeling industry as well, and it's unfortunate, but hopefully through watching videos like this, if you are a makeup artist out there who is doing your research, as you should be, first of all, shout out to all the makeup artists who do their research. Like, I just love y'all. So if you are one of those people who has come here to do some research about curly hair and how to maintain it, please keep doing more number one, and I hope this is useful. If you're a hairstylist, you're a hairstylist. That should include all hair textures, in my opinion. I know that on season two of Hannah, Frida, who was a wonderful makeup artist on the job, she said that whenever she is in charge of a hair and makeup team, she doesn't hire anyone unless they have had qualifications and they have trained in how to manage Afro kinky curly hair. And I think that's amazing. That should be like a bog standard across the industry, you know? But sadly it's not, but I hope we'll get there. I hope we will. Um, Frida, if you're watching this, Hey, beautiful. <laughs> Shout out to Katie as well, who was my makeup artist last year. We had in-depth conversations about what I need. It's just nice to have those in-depth conversations with your makeup artist because they make you feel more valued and more appreciated and like you are safe. I have been so stressed when I sit in the chair of hair and makeup artists that I, I don't know. And it's, um, it's really like difficult, you know? when you feel like they're gonna make you look ridiculous. My job is an actor. I shouldn't be having to think about what I look like when the camera is on me or what the lights look like. Have they lit me properly for my skin tone? You know, I, that's, I shouldn't have to be worrying about that, but sadly I do. Because people don't have these kind of conversations in the industry now. So if anyone from production in any show is watching this, please, please, please do not hire people to look after the hair and makeup and skin of black, black mixed race people, black and brown people globally. Do not hire them unless they are qualified to do so. It is a bare minimum. And that includes barbers. So, listen, for all my black men out here who get their hair done at the barbers, yeah? Why do we never see barbers on set? I really don't understand. If you have any thoughts about it, like it's always a conversation, so let me know. My hair is more or less the shape which I like it. The last thing I'm gonna do is just go in with my fingers and just lift up the roots. I'm not shaking it, I'm, I, I do that sometimes, but 
Today, I'm just gonna lift up the roots. I might flip my head over ever so slightly. I could do this with a pick if I wanted to, but I don't have my pick with me, so I'm just gonna use my hands. And it just helps it to get a little bit bigger. So, separating the curls, as you can see, the before and after, huge difference. It is just so much more rounded. I love the shape that it's at right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learnt something, whether you have curly hair or not. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. <laughs> I never know how to end these. Somebody like help me. Okay, bye. <laughs>